good question. Let's answer this question. He's asking about the Khawarij. Khawarij is a sect of Muslims. They're not disbelievers. Khawarij are people um, uh, who go to the very extreme and they, um, they claim that whoever commits a major sin is a disbeliever. They are actually Muslims, but they have gone to the extreme. And they claim that if you sin, then you're not a Muslim and they uh, become your enemies and they start attacking Muslim communities. We have seen enough of the Khawarij in our lifetime that we know what Khawarij are. Yani, uh, I, I'm sorry, but I'm always giving example of Boko Haram, but nothing, nothing against you, Yan. Yani. <laughs> <laughs> because I think they are one of the biggest uh, and almost obvious examples of Khawarij, that people uh, who are yani, bent upon attacking Muslims for no reason, and their best target is the masjid. The, 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 most, the most things they've attacked and bombed and killed in are the masjid, especially on Friday prayer. And kidnapping Muslim girls from Muslim schools and consider them as slaves. They can, you know, have a relationship with them without any kind of marriage and so on. These are the examples of Khawarij, okay? They claim to be Muslim, they practice like Muslim, they, they feel that they are better than all other Muslims and all Muslims are non-Muslims in their sight, in eyesight, right? Those are the Khawarij. Well, the Kuffar are the Kuffar, you know, they disbelieve uh, or they claim to be believers, but their actions are the actions of the, are the, actions of the disbelievers. Now, <clears throat> um, uh, yesterday, I, inshallah, I will not go into a new hadith. I just want to mention something about yesterday's hadith, that uh, that the one who um, uh, carries tales from one person to the other, uh, in order to sow dissension between people and a rift, uh, that's a namam or qatat. Um, uh, uh, an exception, they are, they, are, they, are not, uh, they are not deserving to enter Jannah, which means that, that they are uh, to be punished for their sin unless Allah forgives them. But an exception is if you deliver the information from one person to the other for a good purpose. So, uh, for instance, you feel that you hear, you hear this person saying things and you feel that he will actually harm this other person. So you, you are here supposed to deliver the information to this other person to warn him, Advice. to warn him of a threat. Then, no, you are not a man. This doesn't apply to you. This is not like uh, this is not the kind of uh, tail uh, carrying or tail delivering that is uh, mentioned in this hadith. What is mentioned in this hadith is somebody for no good reason, just wanting to create problems amongst, create problems amongst uh, others, right? This is what is prohibited. Also, the previous hadith that talks about لَيْسَ minna مَنْ رَفَعَ عَلِينَ السِّلَحِ مَنْ حَمَلَ عَلِينَ السِّلَحِ فَلَيْسَ minna. Whoever attacks us with weapons is not one of us, for instance. Also, there's an exception. An exception is... So, uh, mentioned in Surah Al-Hujurat, for instance, وَإِنْ قَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ قَتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُ بَيْنَهُمَا فَإِنْ بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي When, uh, you, uh, when two uh, Muslim nations or groups are fighting, and you have to fight to stop this fight, for instance, like one of them uh, is the aggressor, and there's no way to stop them just by admonition or by advice, then the only way for you to stop them, for instance, is to uh, fight them back with weapon, then this is an exception. Yes, it's allowed. It's actually not only allowed, but it's an obligation on the Muslim community to do so to stop their aggression. So, he, so although the hadith says, whoever attacks us with a weapon is not one of us, that's, not, that's a general ruling. But there's always exceptions. Just like I mentioned the exception of Namam, here's also a good example of, uh, of an exception that uh, if for a just cause uh, that you had to carry the weapon to protect the weak for instance mm -hmm. uh, for instance a group of thieves are coming to attack your house and they are Muslims and uh, there's no way to stop them but to carry a weapon to protect yourself and your family then that doesn't apply to you self-defense or for the uh, for the benefit of the Muslim community or by under the command of the Muslim, uh, just Muslim ruler who's asking you to fight with him to stop some kind of uh, you know, rebellion, for instance, yeah. that's going to create chaos in the whole uh, nation. But it has to be a just Muslim ruler and it has to be an obvious 
He can't tell you, oh, you have to come and help me to crush this rebellion while he is the one, while the rebellion, rebellious people are the right people, while he is the one who has, he's totally against Sharia. You follow? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll stop here. So like Sudan or Libya, you have two groups fighting each other. Now. Ideally, a third group should come and try to... Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. But if one side is obviously like aggressive, aggressor, you have to take sides. Exactly. A good example is in Libya here. He mentioned a good example where you have the aggressor, uh, with, with, who is an obvious aggressor, Haftar and his people, who are trying to attack people in the west of Libya, in, in Tripoli, and they've attacked them multiple times. And then a third part, Muslim party came in, which is that's the third Muslim party. Turkey came in. They came in and they supported the the parties on the west to prevent to prevent those aggressors from the east from taking over. The aggressors from the east uh, in Libya, for instance, they are uh, where, where was Haftar, their leader, before he came to Libya? Do you guys know? He was in the United States for 30 years. When Gaddafi was deposed, now he shows up. Oh, I'm a leader. I want to come and lead you. So, <laughs> so and, and yes, and you always find foolish people who followed such people, you know. So it's the and the tribes. He went to the tribes, and he had a lot of backing from the tribes, and they started attacking and attacking people in the east. People in the east actually um, are trying their best to establish like a Muslim kind of environment. And I know this from because I know some people who are living in the east, but those people don't want that. So they started attacking. Only Alhamdulillah when. Turkish support came to these people in the, in the West that they managed to rebel repel them. Mm -hmm. And at least now Libya is divided half and half, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. yani, same happened in, in Syria. Yeah. What happened in Syria? Of course, uh, Bashar al-Assad, he, uh, he, he was almost deposed until he asked for help from every country on earth. He got help from, from Russia, got help from Iran, got help from Afghanistan, Af Afghani uh, militias. Uh, from Lebanon, Hezbollah helped him. So many people, and that is how they managed to push back the, 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 the righteous, justified Sunni rebels who wa wa just wanted their own rights, wanted to establish their own rights. What happened is, they started pushing him, they almost annihilated them until Alhamdulillah, Turkey also intervened, and at least the northernmost part of Syria is still, is still preserved, and at least those people found somewhat of a safe environment that they can live uh, to some extent uh, without the aggression of Bashar and his and his multitude of multitude of allies. Alhamdulillah, they have a, a reasonably Muslim environment, and I know this from people like who are living in that area as well. That Alhamdulillah, thousands and thousands of children now have become hafiz, hafiz Quran because and the masajid are full. Alhamdulillah, even a small portion of that land has produced such good benefit to Islam despite all the harm that has happened to the Muslims. <clears throat>